In today's video, we're going to look at the top supplements for lowering your cholesterol and the ones to sometimes maybe ignore and save your money for something else. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now, I wanna pack this video with a lot of information about supplements in particular. And this video is part of a heart health series. So if you want to learn more about understanding your cholesterol test results or the best foods for lowering your cholesterol, you can check out the other videos after you've watched this one. And I'll link them below in the description. Now remember, it's food first and then supplements. This is why they are called supplements. And many would think that as a dietitian, I would be very against taking supplements. But in many cases, we really do need them. And there's very good evidence behind some of them. But I will also say that the supplement industry makes a lot of money and it's very poorly regulated. So always consult with your doctor or your personal registered dietitian before starting to take any supplement. So let's start by looking at fiber supplements. If you've watched my previous video, you'll know that fiber is an amazing secret weapon when it comes to lowering your cholesterol. Fiber from food, that is. Not all of the benefits of diets high in fiber can be achieved through supplementation, if only it was that easy. But now there is a huge market for fiber supplements. And in theory, you would think these would be great for lowering cholesterol. But when it comes to fiber, there is over 100 different types and they all offer unique benefits in their own way. Just like if you had 100 people in a room, they're all gonna have their own unique quirks and unique skills. Now, broadly speaking, when it comes to fiber, there are two types incorporated into supplements, soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is further broken down into viscous and non-viscous, but it's the viscous soluble fiber that we want to focus on as it becomes a thick gel when it comes in contact with the liquid in your gut. And due to this characteristic, it can bind to cholesterol in your small intestine, preventing its absorption into the bloodstream and sweeping it through your digestive tract so it can be eliminated in your stool. The insoluble fiber and the non-viscous soluble fiber do not possess the ability to bind to cholesterol like this. So it's the high viscosity gel forming fibers that we want to be looking out for. And examples of these are beta-glucan, xylem and guar gum. And these have been shown to have lower cholesterol levels. So you will really want to read the label of any fiber supplement to see which type of fiber it includes. My recommendations if you're looking for a fiber supplement for the purpose of lowering your cholesterol is to start with xylem as it has the most research supporting its use at lowering LDL cholesterol. It comes from the husks of seeds of the xylem plant and is found in a variety of whole grain foods as well as fiber supplements such as Consul, Metamucil and other store brands. And xylem has been the most extensively studied soluble fiber either on its own as a supplement or included in other grains. And studies have shown that doses anywhere between 6 and 15 grams per day are able to lower LDL cholesterol by 6 to 24 percent. Xylem is also non-gas forming so it's suitable for those with IBS. There are other soluble fibers on the market however they don't have studies in place to support their use in lowering cholesterol levels. Now when using fiber supplements make sure to follow the directions on the pack. They should be taken with an increased water consumption as well to help them work efficiently otherwise you'll end up like a blocked kitchen sink. It can result in some GI side effects like cramping and bloating so it's often best if the dose is divided throughout the day and in general you shouldn't take fiber supplements around the same time as you take other supplements or medications as the fiber may lower its effectiveness. Now before I move on to the next supplement I'm going to ask that if you're enjoying the video so far I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos like this one and while you're at it I would love it if you gave the video a thumbs up too. So now I'm going to look at plant stanols and sterols. These are available usually as fortified food products like yogurt, drinks, and spreads, but they're also available as dietary supplements. And there is very good research behind them. However, there is less evidence for them in the dietary supplement form in comparison to the food products. Plant sterols and stanols are substances that are found naturally in plants, and they have a chemical structure similar to that of cholesterol. They work by partially blocking cholesterol from being absorbed into the bloodstream from the gut. Normally, about 50% of cholesterol is absorbed, but when plant stanols are taken, it drops to about 20%. And if they are taken in large quantities, they are clinically proven to lower cholesterol, but they are only found naturally in plants in small quantities. For context, you would need to eat 7,500 grams of broccoli to come close to the therapeutic dose. And 30 buckets of broccoli every day for three weeks might be a challenge. So food companies have taken other food products like yogurts and spreads, and they've added big doses of these plant sterols and stanols, and they can sell them as clinically proven to lower cholesterol. Benicol and Flora Proactive are examples of products that contain these added plant sterols and sterols. And there are many own brand products now too. And in people with high blood 
of cholesterol. A daily intake of 1.5 to 2.4 grams of plant stannols lowers LDL cholesterol by an average of 7 to 10 percent in two to three weeks. So these products can be really effective when it comes to lowering cholesterol. As a dietitian, I do often recommend these to my clients. However, rather than taking them in the pill form, I encourage the drinks because that's where we have the most solid evidence. Now they are expensive, so taking them isn't a decision to be taken lightly. In this video, I go into more detail, which will help you decide whether or not you want to fork out the cash on these products and a clever way to review if they're working for you and if you should continue to keep buying them. Now the next supplement that I'm going to look at is omega-3 supplement. In our diet, the best source of omega-3 is oily fish. And more than any other food, fish is linked with a healthy heart. We have known for many years that people who eat more fish have less heart disease and stroke compared to people who never eat fish. One study even found that eating fish once a week reduced fatal heart attacks by 50%. Now fish has many benefits, but the main benefit in terms of heart health comes from the omega-3s that keep the blood from clotting, which can trigger a heart attack, as well as reducing inflammation and maintaining a healthy heart rhythm. So you would like to think then that people who don't eat fish they could instead take an omega-3 supplement for its heart health benefits but unfortunately a large analysis showed there was no effect on total hdl or ldl cholesterol with 3.25 grams of fish oil a day and that's quite a large dose however if you are someone who has high triglycerides there have been studies that show a reduction in triglyceride levels with omega-3 supplements so if you do have hypertriglyceridemia speak with your doctor and they will discuss with you the best omega-3 supplement for taking to monitor this now if you don't eat at least one serving of oily fish a week. I would still consider maybe taking an omega-3 supplement for general health, even if it may not help with your cholesterol. You can get plant-based sources of omega-3 from flax seeds and walnuts, but the plant sources are not as effective as the fish. So you ideally want to look for a supplement with 250 to 500 milligrams of EPA and DHA combined. If you are vegan, you can try to find one that's derived from algae and make sure it has that EPA and DHA. Next, I'm going to look at your general multivitamin. And remember, in this video, I'm looking at supplements for the purpose of lowering cholesterol and improving heart health in particular. So a recent enough study has revealed that most of the more commonly used vitamin and mineral supplements, like a general multivitamin, vitamin D, calcium, and vitamin C, showed no advantage or added risk in the prevention of heart disease, heart attack, or stroke, except for folic acid. Now, you may want to take these for other aspects of health, but they're not going to directly work on improving your cholesterol levels. When it comes to specific vitamin and mineral supplements, I always recommend speaking to your doctor or a dietitian about what you need specifically unique to you rather than just taking something for the sake of it. And finally, we have red yeast rice, which I get asked about a lot. So red yeast rice is a type of fermented rice produced using specific species of mold. Now, do these supplements work? In theory, yes, but whether or not you should take them is a little bit more complex. So red yeast rice turned up on pharmacy shelves only within the last few decades, but it has been prized for its powerful medicinal properties for hundreds of years. It contains the compound monocolon K, the same active ingredient found in prescription cholesterol lowering medications like lovastatin. And because it's chemically identical to a statin, it does work. And it's often used as a cost-effective alternative to pricey medications to help with cholesterol levels. However, because it's similar to statins, it can also come along with the same side effects of statins and it can interact with other medications. So it's really important to tell your doctor if you're taking something like this. Now, I don't recommend these to my clients simply because the supplement industry is so poorly regulated. It's a bit of a wild, wild west, whereas drugs are much better regulated. And often it's difficult to know whether you're even getting bang for your buck. The labels on these products you usually just state the amount of red yeast rice or monoscus purpureus, which is the mold, and not the amount of the monocolon K. So you might be getting none of this monocolon K and just some moldy rice, or you could be getting a really high dose that might be even higher than the dose that your doctor would have prescribed to you starting off in the first place. So there's no standardization as there is with normal regulated drugs. So if you do decide to take it, please make sure to let your healthcare provider know so that they can monitor your cholesterol and your symptoms. So in summary, consider xylem and plant stanols and cereals. If you don't eat oily fish, I would also consider taking an omega-3 supplement. Pass on the red yeast rice and general multivitamin for lowering your cholesterol. Now this video definitely shows how powerful plants can be. So really, one of the best things that you can do for your cholesterol is work on your intake of plant foods. So try your best to get in a variety of fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains. It doesn't mean you need to have a plant-only diet, but increasing these foods will certainly help. Now if you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe and check out my other videos on heart health. And keep Keep an eye out for another video I have coming soon about the cholesterol lowering mistakes you don't want to be making. As a thank you for watching all the way to the end, I have a recipe ebook which you can get for free linked in the description box below. Stay happy and healthy and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.